welcome back to Summertime Vlogs. It's number seven, Visits with Soxy Nana Alice. Hope you enjoy some views. Uh, Chewie and I already went for our short walk this morning, so I took you on our journey. And uh, yeah, and I dropped Walter off at the Panama Dam where they go tubing down the Lazy Channel. I got some footage for you, and at the very end of the footage is a big eagle that was watching all the tubers getting into the water. Hope you enjoy, and we'll see you back for knitting in just a bit. Hi guys, we're back in the gazebo here. Uh, it's a very cool, a little bit rainy, a um, little bit windy, long weekend in August. Our first weekend of August is a long weekend for us in here in Canada. So the park is pretty busy. It's hopping with grandkids all over the place and t extra tents and extra people. It's wonderful. It's uh, such a beautiful time here in, uh, in Manitoba. It's such a nice summer we're having. Um, we're pretty fortunate to have such uh, such good weather these days, off and on with some heat, um, just like Europe and England and all across the States, we're getting our, our big hot flashes. Um, so, but uh, yeah, so if you're uh, an older person like me, not a problem, we're used to the hot flashes. Anyways, I thought I'd quickly catch you up on some of our knitting, my knitting. Okay, so I have been working on a few things and I did finish the pair of socks I was working on. These were, you were watching the Garden Gate socks. I put them on Instagram. This is by Rose Hill Yarns and the uh, little pink uh, heel toe and the little bit at the top of the cuff was Regia Baby's First Wool or Baby's First Sock, something like that, in Orchid. Anyway, so I finished them off. I did sock tubes. Oh, there we go. I just did two sock tubes and then I went ahead and put the heel in as an afterthought heel and it's exactly the same as the toe except instead of going down to maybe six or eight stitches here at the toe I went down to about 12 because I like my heel to be a little bit wider at the bottom. Yeah so I did finish those off so now I have a finished pair of socks and I am entering them in the hashtags that I was telling you about in previous uh, previous shows for Dear Design and the Bob Along and, oh, whatever. <laughs> Actually, the Bob Along works out good. Hi, Anne <laughs> from Spa Knits. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, definitely have some, uh, some uh, eh, looks like scrappy bits in here, leftovers for sure. So yeah, so I finished those. So now I can wear them on a little bit cooler day. Today's 19 degrees Fahrenheit, or sorry, 19 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty chilly still. So I've been working on my Vincus by Barocco. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Oh, that pattern there was just my own vanilla pattern that I make for myself all the time. So last time I showed you, my Vincus was way down here at the little bumblebee, my little stitch marker, and it was way down there. And you work from the bottom up, and now I've got just about finished the back panel. I actually thought I was finished, and then I'm, I actually bound it off and everything and then 
realized that it was just a little too short. I like my sweaters to be a little bit longer just to cover um, a little bit more of the tum-tum, you know, those floppy bits. Anyway, so I uh, have to do another set of, uh, a couple of sets more of, of pattern. And then I'll have that back done. And then I'll get the front done. Hopefully I get it done before the, before the fall. I'm sure I will. But uh, it's slow going because you do, I do have to pay attention to the pattern, which is lots of fun. So, and that is in um, some wool I was telling you about last time. Actually, the ball band's gone. I don't know where it went, but I'll show you when I get home and we'll, we'll talk about it again, right? Okay, so what else have I been working on? I ripped back my tam again, restarted it because it was really kind of big. So I did it on a little bit ne narrower needle. So I will get this tam done eventually for myself. This beret, I'm getting there. And I decided also to do a two by two ribbing and to incorporate the mohair with the corked uh, wool by Rose Hill Yarn as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So am I, do I have the pattern here for this? No, this is the other pattern I was trying before, I believe. Yeah, that was the Soho pattern, but I'm not doing the Soho pattern. I'm going to be doing the Ukrainian pattern again that I did in the uh, previous TAM. So I will work on that. And that's in my little, my little uh, Japanese knot bag that I made so long ago. This was just using fat quarters. And I just went ahead and made this, grabbed a little pattern off of uh, Pinterest and made myself a little, a little bag. That worked out really good. So, but I'm so excited to show, oh, hang on one second. Okay, sorry about the interruption. Um, that worked out. My neighbor next door here at the trailer brought us some movies to watch. Um, so, uh, for later today. So, that's awesome. Right now, Walter's having a, a bit of a nap in the, in the trailer. Anyways, where was I when I was interrupted? Hmm. Okay, oh, I was excited to share with you. I'm using up, again, some yarn from my leftover Barocco, the leftover Barocco yarn. And I started the Exordium cowl, or sorry, the Exordium shawl. So, and you know how, I don't know, there's so many wonderful uh, podcasters out there and they all get together and they're all uh, trading around all these awesome ideas and, and, and inspirations. Well, it gave me the inspiration to start this uh this Exordium shawl, and uh, it's on Ravelry. It is was a free pattern. I'm not sure if it still is. It was a free pattern when I got it. And this is it here. Oh, what, wow, it looks so good on camera. And what it is, it's two colors, a main color and then a contrast color, of course. Well, the contrast color I'm using is a variegated. Now, I'm, it's a mystery yarn. I'm going to have to go to Wolseley Wool, my local yarn shore, and see if I can search it out. I did buy a ball of this. Where is it? Is this the one? Nope. Here it is here, and it's got, it is wool, and it's uh, kind of slubby, but it's a very much a twist, variegated twist, and it's got greens, and I haven't got to the turquoise yet. I'm actually going to cut the turquoise out, because the person I'm giving this to for Christmas isn't a big, uh, bright uh, bright wool colored person but it's got all kinds of colors through it here's a second ball here it was a massive big 200 gram ball when I got it and so but it's a mystery yarn and see it's got all these colors in here I don't know if you can pick them up but it's a real twist so if any of you know uh, in the comments below what it might be it's got a blue and green twist this is kind of a blue and turquoise twist here there's kind of a khaki green and blue twist here and this uh, purpley color is kind of a purple and blue twist or kind of a pink and blue twist. Very beautiful yarn, very soft. And I'm make, this is my contrast color and I am using the Barocco wool, uh, ultra, fi ultra fine, ultra wool fine, which is 100% superwash wool. This is what I made my ranunculus out of and it's incredibly soft once you wash it up and this will be that other wool will be as well but I believe this has does this have nylon in it let me check no it's 100% super wash wool um, best results place in a mesh bag and wash it does pill just slightly but not too bad but I made my ranunculus with this and it's gorgeous I also used the pink heather and I made a um 
the weekend or light with it. And that is a gorgeous sweater too. So I, I had some left over. So I thought that would work for this uh, exordium shawl. And it's just turning out, oh, that's the wrong side, sorry. Uh, there is a right and wrong side, but it is just turning out gorgeous. So I started with the gray and then changed to the variegated and you can see it goes main color gray, variegated, gray, variegated, and then through. It almost looks like a fade. It's so pretty. It's turning out just gorgeous. And then a chunk of the plain solid color. And now again, a chunk of the variegated. And now it's fading again. One, knit one row, knit one row. It's all garter, so it's pretty cool. And then I'm going to do another section of this. I don't know what you'd call it, a broom stitch or a fan stitch. It's really pretty. It's very easy and it's very meditative. I do do a lot of mistakes when I do garter stitch, though. I have to admit, with this Barocco wool, it can be quite splitty, and I end up dropping down and picking up as if I was doing a half fisherman stitch. I don't like that. I've had to rip it back a few times and fix my mistakes, but I tr traded my metal needles for these wool needles. Or, sorry, not wool needles, for these wooden. I believe these are uh, set in knit picks. And I'm using a size US 5 and I sharpened them with an emery board. I just use a piece of sandpaper or an emery board and I just sharpen them up and then smooth them out with um, a little bit of very extremely fine grit sandpaper and it makes them very sharp and then it's much easier to get in. I know the Chow Goose or the Haya Haya's might work as, as well, but I find that whenever I'm doing something in a lace pattern like this, I prefer to have wooden needles so that it's the stitches stick to the needle and they don't slide around. There's a time and place for wooden needles, that's for sure. And that is, oh, here's the Exordium shawl right here. Let's see if I'll pull out the paper. I think it'll be in black and white, guys, because I don't have a color printer, sorry. Yeah, this is the Exordium shawl here. And it's by Rebecca Pico. And that's it there. So there you go. And I'm going to hopefully get this made in time to enter into the uh, across the shawl, across the pond shawl cow, um, make along or cow, but done by uh, Ruth, Ruth Loves to Knit podcast and Little Monkeys and Me. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to put the, I'll put that, try to get that information for you below. If you need it, though, and you need it quicker, then just email me at SoxyNanaAlice at gmail.com or uh, message me on Instagram. I'm SoxyNana on Instagram. Oh, and I also, while I was uh, doing some watching some TV the other evening, I did, oh, am I ever pale in this picture? Anyways, uh, I did get some um, of my corner-to-corner -corner blanket worked on, and I'm doing that in a nine patch. It's going to come up looking like these. See, nine squares, crocheted, and I'm using a 4.5 crochet hook. I don't know what letter that is. And I'm using up all my leftovers of my DK weight uh, acrylic yarn that I've kind of accumulated over the years. And I'm going to make a nine patch and then use a solid all the way around so that it comes out looking like a patchwork quilt. And there you have it. So I'm working on this blue one here. And then I don't know what the next color will be. I have a whole bunch of balls of different colors to, uh, to pull from. Oh, I'm getting all tangled up here. I'm going to just sit this down. I'm just going to set it down gently. Hopefully not knock over the camera. Anyway, so that's what I've been working on. Um, we're going to be going home tomorrow, and which is Monday, August. Oh, it'll be August 1st tomorrow. Really? Wow. Yeah, August 1st tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so we're going home tomorrow, which is Monday, August 1st. And then we're going to be bringing the grandkids back. So I'm hoping to get some footage in here. Uh, I know this is going to be a later video. And it's probably going to go up in about two weeks from my last video. So, sorry guys. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you to Nitty Stew, Knitting Stew. Uh, thank you so much, Leanne, for giving me a shout out on your video. Uh, I've jumped in subscribers again, so which is lovely. And I, uh, yeah, so check out, if you haven't checked out Knitting Stew, she's from um, Canada here, and she is a flight attendant 
who uh, travels across back and forth across Canada and she knits in her hotel and she has lives on Instagram and she's a lovely lady and uh, yeah so catch her her podcast as well and uh, yeah and so anyways I will sign off here quickly and I'll catch you in the next section okay so my, oh I got to put in a whole bunch of I've got one really cool video again watch till the end and I've got a really special video for you guys of uh, a special little um, visitor that we had and uh, yeah so anyways can't wait for you to sh see what you think of that one leave comments below let me know how you like the video give us a thumbs up subscribe all the things and we'll catch you in the next section see you soon Hi guys, I'm back in the craft room, um, back here home in Winnipeg, and I just wanted to catch you up before I sign off and show you the cute little uh, visitor we had, like I mentioned in the previous uh, previous uh, little clip. Uh, I just wanted to show off again my be these beautiful um, socks that I finished. I thought they deserved to be on a sock blocker, okay? They deserve to be on sock blockers. This is Beautiful Garden Gate by Rose Hill Yarns out of Alberta. They have beautiful colorways. If you had get a chance, check them out, okay? Um, beautiful, beautiful wool to work with and to wear. And it is just a stunning colorway, this Garden Gate. Anyways, I just wanted to show them off again on sock blockers now that I got home. Also, I wanted to show off because I told you that I finished my V-Beret uh, for the... Uh, Ukrainian um, knitting with Ukraine hashtag and I finished it and I blocked it on a plate and you I guess you can't really tell that it's so much bigger but I also used that mohair I think I brought down did I bring down the wool I'm hoping I did probably not I probably forgot it upstairs sorry but anyways this is on that little uh, little cone that I had from my yarn store it's called concept mohair and I used again this is the colorway corked by um, the same company as this now I just said it didn't I Rose Hill Yarns in Alberta okay so I'm going to try this on for you folks because it fits it is so cute I just love it so this is it here can you see that I'm hoping you can see that and it's turning out good it's pretty bright down here today I'm pretty shocked never this bright I guess because I've got some natural light coming in here it is only like one o'clock in the afternoon on August the 8th and I am gonna pretty soon sign off here this is a beret style guys I just love it so much fits so much better and my mom used to wear these so it's really kind of special that I'm going to be making some of these as well I also got a wonderful pattern uh, given to me it was a free pattern but I'm going to do it it's called the elfin beret and I got it from Muddy Boots is the name of the podcaster. She's Amy out, I believe it's Amy in Australia. Get a chance to check out her podcast. She does some beautiful, they're homesteading. She does some beautiful work with some organic cotton. Anyways, um, I'm talking too fast, of course, because I'm trying to finish off this video because we just spent five days, four nights with the grandkids out at the trailer. We had an absolute blast. Look, we got matching bracelets. We got matching leather bracelets. I'll be showing those off later. And I'll be uh, incorporating their videos in with my next uh, summertime vlog. Anyways, I wanted to show off this beret. I also did a little tiny uh, eye cord here at the very top because my all my mom's little berets or Tams used to always have these little eye cord uh, tops on them. I thought they were, I thought it was kind of cute. So very nostalgia for me. I love this pattern. Very easy, very quick. And yeah, thank you so much for that, for um, providing us with that pattern. Uh, I just wanted to update you again. Okay, so I, last time I did the little clip before, I was right about here. 
There's my little progress keeper. I'll explain about those in a second too. I got that much more done on the exordium cowl or exordium shawl. And again, wow, it turns out so pretty with the changes in color. This is a mystery ball of yarn that I had in my stash and the Barocco ultralight wool. So that's how I'm caught up on that whip. What else? I got caught up on a little bit more on my Vincus. So I finished the one back panel. I think I told you I had to rip it back because, or I had to keep going a little bit longer than I thought I would. So I was here where the little bumblebee is. And I did another set of patterns, two patterns there, the drop stitch and then the diamond eyelet and then another drop stitch. And then this will be the shoulders and the neck. So that's the back of my Vincus finally finished. And I have started the front. So that's the front. And I remembered to grab the ball. This is Hayfield Bonus Decay Extra Value 100 gram tumble dry machine washable 100% acrylic. This came from Wool Warehouse on a very cheap, I paid $3 for this ball july 22nd and it is in the color spearmint and this is true to color there it's just a little greener but pretty close to being that color kind of bluey last but not least i will tell you that my myocardian is for all intents and purposes my myocardian is finished i just have to steak it and because i did have quite a few people that wanted me to show how i'm going to steak it I'm going to do a completely different separate video on this sticking because it is acrylic. 100% acrylic. I'm going to hold it up for you. 100% acrylic in the Stylecraft DK from England again. I actually went ahead and picked up along the front edges, leaving the stick stitches in the middle. I went ahead and picked up and knit the button band from bottom to top, from to the neckline. I'm gonna show you here. I went ahead and I did a two, one by one rib, picked the stitches up lengthwise, this way, picked them up one at a time. Actually, two stitches, I picked up two, skipped a space, picked up two more, skipped a space, went ahead and went all the way down and I did a yarn over buttonhole. So I have, believe I have 10 buttonholes here. And I picked up the other side as well, all the way from the top to the bottom. Same way, same concept. And I left a steak stitches in the middle. I did that because the last time I did a steak on the Maya cardigan, I steaked it before I did the button band which is how they tell you how to do it. And I trusted the pattern. But what happens is the inside will curl under and you'll go ahead and put the, it in. But when you're picking it up, I had a hard time keeping my tension nice and neat. It was, e and I thought, well, maybe this would be easier if I had a bit of bulk to hang on to as I was picking up the stitches. Then I could kind of see as I went, what kind of texture and what kind of openings and what kind of um, tension I was going to get with picking up these stitches. And I had a chance to pull it back and start again without too much uh, interference with the back, uh, with the flip under here for this uh, tab. That might make a bit better sense. I know it kind of sounds kind of waffly, but that might make better sense once I do the steak with you on a separate video. So I'm gonna hold off on this, probably get it done in September. This isn't a rush because this will be a Christmas gift. So I'm hoping you guys can hang tight till September when I get back into town and I sit down and plan out and actually do the video full out with steaking and uh, reinforcing and cutting this steak and then folding it back under. And uh, you'll, I'll take you on that adventure with me. Okay, so that's my Maya cardigan. It's all done. I haven't washed and blocked it because I'm going to wait for the steak. So I still have some ends to weave, few ends to weave in. The color work turned out gorgeous. I just love it. This is mocha, denim, stone, khaki. Those are the colors. 
in Stylecraft DK, special DK. And that's from England. It's 100% DK acrylic yarn. Oh, and the little pockets turned out cute. Remember I told you how they'd look like they were flat? And they are. Here, let's put that over my shoulder. And you can, oh, see. Let's see if we can get that in there. See, so it's like a little patch pocket, but it's inside. And it goes right inside. You can put your hand right inside both those little pockets. They don't interfere with anything. And here's how the inside looks. Excuse the ends that, are, ends that aren't woven in yet. But the pocket is the plain patch color. That's where I went ahead and knit the, the, the patch pocket and then sewed it down with a slight whip stitch all the way around. Don't pull anything too tight. Just let it relax. You know, really, this isn't a pocket that you're going to be putting, you know, little teeny tiny things in. If you do well, they might just fall out the bottom. So just be mindful of that. You don't want, if you're doing this kind of a pocket and you don't want it to show too much, you really don't want to pull the, the whip stitches on the other side really tight or else it'll pucker. Okay. So that, as they say, is that. I'm going to tuck this, this whip away because it's still a whip until we've done the steak. I'm going to tuck that way to away till September. So like I told you, we had the grandkids out at the trailer for five days. We had a blast. We did a bunch of tubing uh, and they went to what was called the hoopla. I'll show you pictures in our next episode. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Thanks to all the OGs. Thanks to all the newcomers. I've had an influx of newcomers. Thanks to Nitty Stew, Knitting Stew. And uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, welcome you all back into the uh, craft room when I'm home and back at the crafting gazebo when I'm out at the, G at the trailer in Pinawa. And I hope you're enjoying my summertime vlogs. Take care and knit on, folks. Bye now. Okay, I would like to uh, override this audio right now to tell you about this little guy that moseyed on into our, our camping area. It's a little boy. Um, we believe it's a little boy bear cub because we had two little cubs in the area. The mother has abandoned these babies, whether she has been killed by a car or other means. She is no longer around and left these two little cubs behind. The conservation officer did catch the little female and now they are trying to catch this little male cub. Um, and uh, he moseyed on into our neighborhood because I believe he smelled our barbecue. Uh, at which point Walter did get up out of his chair and he did scare him off up back over the berm. He's a cute little guy, but again, a wild animal. So make sure you take all precautions and stay bear smart when you are out in the bush or in the country. And yeah, so this little guy, he did take off when Walter opened the gazebo and clapped his hands. Off he went. He took a look at us, a second look at us when he was sitting up on the berm and then moseyed his way to the next campsite.